Good morning. Are you going to pass out the... Um, <laughs> um, as uh, they said, I'm a, I'm a dietitian by trade, and I am uh, kind of out of... When I took this position, um, I kind of went out of my norm, which sometimes can be good to, um, to kind of reach out and, and do something different. Uh, the position just kind of called to me. I really wasn't looking for anything. And I had never had that experience before where something just called to me. I saw it posted and I couldn't quit thinking about it. Um, I, I started researching uh, the position and uh, looking into it further and uh, ended up applying for it and, and uh, getting the job. So uh, it, it uh, really has been very rewarding. To give you just a little bit of background, um, let me go ahead and put the PowerPoint up. Um, our Lady Belfont's parent organization is Bon Secours um, out of Baltimore, Maryland, and um, they were started by the Bon Secours Sisters, and so we are a Catholic uh, faith-based um, facility, and um, of course the sisters have always worked in the community. When they came to the United States from France, they went into the homes, which was something that women didn't do at that time, in the 1800s, and um, so that is kind of the backbone of, of what they started, was going into the homes and working in the community. And about 20 years ago, they started working in the community of Baltimore, Maryland, where the um, uh, first hospital was. And um, it was um, very high crime and um, very much um, low income, uh, drugs ran rampant. And so um, they wanted to make a difference in that community. And from that first position that they started in Baltimore, there are now eight of us across the system that are in the Healthy Community Initiative uh, uh, positions. So that kind of gives you guys a background of where my position came from. And uh, not all facilities have it uh, around the country, but um, I think um, with Catholic health care, they really do care about the people and the communities that they're in and they wanted to outreach a little more. But this is, um, it just gives you a framework, it's what we use um, to look at how we're going to uh, approach a community and our work that we do daily. And it's going in and getting the community involved. And like Maddie said, churches are a great way to introduce yourself into a community. Um, Look at their assets and their needs, but we talk a lot about, we don't want to just look at what's going wrong in the community. We also want to see what's going well. So you don't always want to be negative, you want to also look at the positives. Um, start community dialogue and see what they, they really need, and then look at the vision and the goals. And, and it kind of does a circular um, flow because you do kind of start back over. It just depends on how things go and you know they want us to go out to the community and see what they think they need or what they need, not what people set up in an office and think that a community needs. So um, it's a little different than uh, what sometimes we, we tend to do in, in um, healthcare. And on the bottom uh, part you can see um, a healthy community is not just the health of a person's body, it's the community you live in, it's, it's housing, it's economic development, um, it is health, it is, um, can be rats and trash, which was one of the big things that they worked on in Baltimore. Um, and they still have that problem today, no matter how much they do, people still tend to throw their trash out. No matter how much work, in 20 years, they still battle trash in that community. Um, affordable housing, you know, that, that makes a healthy community. Um, so, as you can see, there's, you know, a lot of things that go into it. Um, the priority initiatives, you know, we just really focus on, on injustice and transforming and improving a community and what that particular community needs. Um, look at the, the resources that's there and, and secure resources to do what is needed. Um, communicate with the community and then, of course, evaluate and get the um, community involved to empower them. Some of the things that we start, always start with is community forums, getting them together and seeing what they need. And the first um, community that we chose when we looked at uh, communities in Greenup County, where our um, hospital is located, we wanted to stay in that county even though we serve people in Boyd County, 
um, in Carter County, Lewis County, even over in Ohio. Um, we chose the Arbolite community. And some of the things that came up are, in every community, drug abuse, as we know, Oxycontin and, and drugs are a big problem, um, crime, jobs, uh, affordable housing. Uh, one of the big problems in that community happened to be safe drinking water. Even though they had city water, they had a problem with the tank that held the water. And they had been on a bull water advisory for over 20 months when we went into that community. And that is huge. I mean, people were paying for water, but they couldn't drink it. So um, that was a huge problem. Uh, thank goodness, um, working they were working on it. The city of Greenup was working on it. Uh, we got in contact with the, um, the state, and they worked through the problem and got funding and ended up having to purchase their water from another water source, which was Cannonsburg Water, and have it brought in from another area, uh, pumped into that area because they couldn't fix it. And it was a large amount of money that it took, and that's why they couldn't fix it. You know, we all know that things happen like that, but, you know, that's a large health concern for people. So we were glad that that, that was resolved. Um, another thing that was a real concern for the community was there was nowhere for them to exercise. There was you know, it's a long way to drive in from the country to uh, get any kind of exercise at all or to have anywhere to walk. Um, there's no sidewalks, so you can't, you know, as we all know, if we've been in rural communities, you know, you can't walk on the side of the road. Uh, so uh, we ended up uh, working with the school system to use um, area behind the school. We had a donation from land from one of the residents out there and uh, we ended up getting a walking track and um, a multi-purpose ball field, which we're still working on the ball field, um, and some nice playground equipment and redoing a picnic shelter. Um, see some of the pictures uh, that we have. We also have a community garden in the, in the Argolot now, and um, a school garden, and as you can see, we have a greenhouse there. And the picture on the right is a pizza garden. And they haven't planted that yet, but it is uh, ready to be planted uh, because we're waiting for frost to, to go away. But you know, one section will be herbs and one section will be tomatoes. And the kids are really excited about doing that. I think it's gonna be really fun for them. And then we'll be, um, in the fall, we'll be able to uh, use those items and have pizza. Um, won't be able to grow the wheat, but they, there is a small, uh, there's a type of wheat that they grow in that even to see the, for the kids to see how it looks, but um, it wouldn't be produced. But um, the cla each classroom will have a um, little garden plot, and um, we also planted blueberry bushes, so the kids will be able to see fresh blueberries being grown, and um, butterfly bushes. Some of the classes um, hatch the butterflies from the cocoon, and they do that every year, and so we uh, worked on outdoor classroom and things like that. Um, so this is something that the community has started using with the walking track. A lot of people go out there and walk. Um, the kids walk. Uh, a lot of the teachers have the kids walk around before they go to the, the playground. And um, we received a grant um, from the Paul and I grant, which is a state transportation grant, to do some walking incentives, and we'll start that in the fall, and also a bicycle safety camp. So we mainly work off of grant funding, and uh, which is what most nonprofits do because we, you know, money's always short. Um, but it has been uh, very successful. Uh, this is uh, the first uh, project that we did out in the community. We went into a little area called Cherokee Lake and we did a summer program. We took food out there and um, books and did health fairs and things like that. So it's just, um, just getting out in the community and going to where the kids are and the most needs. Those kids don't get to go on summer vacations, they don't get to go swimming, so it was a nice opportunity. I worked with Family Resource to do that and took the bookmobile out and those kind of things. So we do a lot of things like that um, in the community to try to um, reach the kids that um, are most at need. Um, we, of course, did a survey and um, it showed um, the things that we have done. This is the results of you know, how we chose what to do with the walking and, and those kind of things. 
One of the other projects that we have done in Argolot is um, one of the factors that came up when we were doing research is the um, education, um, low education attainment uh, for Greenwich County. There was a high rate of dropout, uh, right? So we looked at um, how we could help kids get a little more excited about school and, and those kind of things. So we um, do book distributions through First Book. I don't know if you're familiar with that. You can look it up online. Um, and uh, give low-income kids books for free. They're brand new books, and that's been very popular. Um, we also funded, um, through grant funding, for the Paramount Arts Center to take a play out to Argolite Elementary, which was a great opportunity for the kids to see a play right in their school. Um, so that was a wonderful opportunity. This is an overview of the, um, the property, and you can kind of see where the ball field was already there, and we did the walking track around it. And the school system agreed to let um, the community use it, so it was, it was great. And since then, legislators have passed a law to where um, there's no liability on school systems. They can actually let the community come in and use things without having the worry of the liability. So that was a that was a great thing for the Kentucky legislation to do. It just passed this year, I think, or in the fall. So it's a really new uh, law, but uh, the, the school is the heart of most communities out in the rural areas, and so it's a great place to be able to use, but a lot of school systems don't want people on their property after school. They don't want the kids playing on the playground because of vandalism and things like that, but um, the legislature has um, actually made it a lot easier for them to do. We uh, get the staff involved at the hospital with projects, um, backpack program, uh, doing um, food drives and those kind of things. We're always getting the, the hospital employees involved in helping us uh, assist the low income people in the community. I'm gonna switch bases to the next community that um, I work in. In the past year, we've moved over into Ironton, Ohio. And um, we serve that community. We have um, primary care there. It's just right across the river from Russell, where we are located. So it made sense to move over into that community. And the, um, it's not a rural community. It's more urban downtown city. Um, so it, there's uh, quite a bit of difference in working in, in the different communities, plus the difference in the states. Um, but I don't know if any of you are familiar with Ironton, but one of the things that they're known for is they have the longest running Memorial Day Parade in the nation, which is you know something to speak of, um, and they have a huge turnout for that. Um, but it's a um, an, an old industry town, kind of like Portsmouth, that has lost um, a lot of their jobs. So the economic uh, situation is very poor. But they have a lot of little nonprofits that work really hard to try to bring that city back to its glory, as they say. They have Ironton in Bloom that um, fills the streets with flowers in the summer. Um, they have uh, community action agencies and um, Friends of Ironton. And there's a lot going on there right now that's uh, some very positive things. They uh, have a new spray park and they just built a new farmer's market. And it will open this fall, so or this summer. Um, so that's gonna be very positive. Some of the things that I have done in the um, working in, through grant funding in the Ironton community is um, there's a, we fund an after school program over in the housing development and um, community action actually provides the um, staff but we fund one day a week and they fund two days a week. Um, we've purchased computers to put into the community center and to the senior centers and we're also assisting in funding a summer camp for those kids. Um, we're working on a community garden in that neighborhood, and like I said, the farmer's market is opening. Uh, so we're hoping that um, the kids can even grow some things in the, in the community garden that they can maybe sell in the farmer's market to fund some of their summer camps and things like that that they do. Um, this has been very rewarding to work in that community to see the small little changes that have been made. Um, the community center was probably built in the 50s and um, the director wasn't really interested in, 
in us working in that community, but he has seen that we've been there for a year and we continue to come back and work. And so he's gonna redo the community center now. He's got architects in there and he said, if I know you're gonna stay, then I'm gonna put some money in the community center. So that was really positive um, to see him come on board. And that's the challenge that I have seen the most is trying to reach the ones that really want to make a difference. And it takes a long time to meet the right person. And I think no matter what you're working in, that you have to get out there and work in with the other nonprofits that are trying to do things. Um, I'm on a lot of boards in Ashland, a community kitchen board, um, working Helping Hands in Green Up. Um, and you know, you just have to really get out there and, and get with the movers and shakers and kind of um, find those that want to make a difference. And as a group, you can make a difference, but it's like a team, there's no I'm team. Um, you have to work with others, you have to collaborate. And that's, I think the whole message is that you really need to collaborate. So some of the things, we continue to work in art a lot with the walking track, we're gonna um, roll out programs and um, the school garden and community garden um, and continue to build partnerships with um, uh, residents and churches and um, everyone that, that lives in that community as well as in Ironton and um, just this week uh, we were notified for Ironton that there's uh, someone that wants to do summer feeding so you know it just kind of all falls in place and and things add on all the time and uh, makes a difference for the kids and, and the families. So uh, that's, you know, it's very rewarding to be able to do that kind of thing in your daily work. And from there, I think Diana's on. The next section of our presentation is on the program that I direct, which is called Healthy Community Services. And this is most all of our other uh, community ministries. It includes health ministry and faith community nursing, and I was got the opportunity to talk about that quite a bit yesterday. But we partner with about 50 churches. Uh, most of them are in Green and Boyd County. Some of them are in uh, Ireton, uh, the, the community that Diva just talked about. We have a few in Carter County, uh, one in uh, Lawrence County that we work with. But um, the church partnerships are, are so valuable. Uh, churches are such a such a, a positive influence in communities and in community projects. Uh, we talked yesterday about some of the things that we do in health ministry and faith community nursing, like health screenings, educational classes, we do a lot of CPR classes and safe sitter classes in churches. I do the monthly mailings that I mentioned yesterday. Uh, anybody that goes through any of our screenings, whether it's in a church or another, uh, facility receives personal health counseling by a health care professional and then it's also advocacy and awareness. Last year we did 98, uh, 94 health fairs. Uh, most of these were in churches, some were in other places, but I would say at least um, two-thirds of them were in the churches that we partnered with. We did a, a, over 6,000 health screenings for diseases such as cardiovascular disease, and diabetes, anemia, osteoporosis, glaucoma, and peripheral vascular disease. Um, as I said, each of the people that went through our screenings received personal health counseling, and if we identified a problem that somebody didn't already know that they had, we would send them a follow-up letter. We would, you know, remind them that you know, they needed some follow-up and, and offer to assist them if they needed assistance in obtaining that follow-up. We also did over 400 flu shots, in, uh, mostly in our partnering churches last year. I, I mentioned our community education classes, and again, we do a lot of CPR classes. I'm certified to teach those. We do Safe Sitter. We do nutrition classes. We do classes on physical activity, or we help uh, churches and other organizations develop wellness programs. Um, and then if the church has a, a particular interest in a particular health issue or, or problem, then you know sometimes I can uh, provide that presentation for them myself. Other times I go to somebody within our hospital that has a little more expertise in that particular area, and I've never had anybody turn me down to do a, pre a presentation uh, in the church. 
So it, it's, a, it's a good, good ministry. Um, we do monthly mailings to our churches uh, with information that we think, or that I think, uh, they will uh, uh, find uh, interesting or something that they may have, you know, an interest in. I talked to you yesterday a little bit about the wellness tips that we publish each year. I send those out usually with my December mailing so that the churches know that they can use those throughout the year. There's one for each week of the year. I try to coordinate those with things that are happening at that time of year, like National Health Observances and those types of things. So this is week 17, which is the week that we're in. There's one for body, one for mind, one for spirit. And this year I also added a green tip because I also lead our hospital's green team. I always include articles for uh, their newsletters that they can use and then other uh, information about local, state, and national uh, observances and events. Uh, one of the things that we identified early on in our ministry when we started health ministry was the fact that transportation is a huge barrier for a lot of our patients to get uh, to access the services that they need. And so we uh, started a van ministry way back in 1998. And we now have three vans. Uh, we have one that's equipped with a wheelchair lift. Wheelchair lift. We have uh, one, one full-time driver, one part-time driver, and a couple of PRN drivers. We had hoped in the early days that we could get volunteer drivers for our van uh, ministry, but that turned out to be a, a liability and the insurance nightmare. So we had to hire uh, folks for this. Even though our van drivers are employees of Our Lady of Belmont Hospital, we have to generate their support. Uh, through grant funding and donations and things like that, uh, as Diva mentioned, it's not these are not uh, positions that the hospital uh, supports. We have they're they're paid actually through funds that we have with uh, the foundation at Our Lady of Belfont. But you know, last year we served about we averaged 61 different people every month that we served with the van ministry, and. Um, Total, from what I could do uh, statistically, there was about 227 different people that we served throughout the year. Some of those used the van service multiple times during the week. So that represented 2,013 round trips and uh, almost 50,000 miles uh, traveled using the van service. So you can see what a huge gap and what a great need that that is. Uh, we take patients to campus physicians. A lot of our a lot of our transports are to physician offices, outpatient testing, and probably almost half of them are things like cardiac rehab, and pulmonary rehab, and physical therapy, and speech therapy, and all of those rehabilitative services that keep people uh, healthy and out of the hospital and improve their quality of life. Is it sourced from the churches, so they go to the churches and then they're picked up there? No, no, they're picked up in their homes. It's a it's a curb to curb service coordinated through our office. They call us to schedule. Uh, it takes us sometimes up to a week or two to be able to work someone into the schedule. So we ask for you know as much notice as they can give us in terms of scheduling them for the for the service. We do allow them to have someone accompany them on the van if they need that because we can't stay with them. You know, it's a it's a curb to curb. We drop them off and then we go back and pick them up when they're ready to go home. Okay. We also have a program called Senior Services that's under the umbrella of Healthy Community Services. And this is primarily our uh, uh, Meals on Wheels programs are operated under that umbrella. We have about uh, seven Meals on Wheels programs that are serving people in 10 communities. We have about 318 volunteers in those communities that are uh, donating probably about 2,000 hours a month, and they deliver approximately 4,500 meals every month in these 10 communities that we serve. Now, some of these, uh, the only uh, programs that we operate directly from the hospital are the two that serve our immediate communities of like Russell, Flatwoods, Raceland, Westwood. Uh, but we have helped more outlying communities like Grayson and Olive Hill and South Shore. 
green up, develop their own programs so that they can use their own resources, resources and serve the people in their community. So all of those programs are included in this total. But you know, Joan mentioned the value, the dollar value of all of these volunteer hours. And you can see, I forgot to change my slide here. This was actually fiscal year 11. There were uh, close to $500,000 worth of volunteer hours that were donated through our different Meals on Wheels programs. Our management team actually is responsible for one of the programs. We, uh, we take turns delivering meals uh, each, each month. And uh, my day is like the first Monday. Diva does the second Monday. So you know ahead of time what day you're going to deliver. But it's always a blessing uh, delivering those meals. Uh, our hospital, I think, is a great community partner. I think we are perceived as a community partner in Greene County. We uh, help uh, resurrect, if you will, the Greene County Interagency Council a few years ago. And I talked a little bit about that yesterday, where all of our uh, service agencies come together once a month uh, and uh, exchange ideas and share and uh, work together on various projects, and this has been a really, really great thing. One of the things that has arisen from the Greenwood County uh, Interagency Council is a group called GREAT, the, the acronym GREAT, which is Green of Residents Ending Addiction Together, and that's our newly formed uh, drug, drug task force in Greenwood County. Uh, drugs has been identified as one of the, the huge problems in, in Eastern Kentucky and, and probably throughout Appalachia. Uh, our task force really hit the ground running, and then as, as things happen from time to time, uh, it, it kind of fizzled out, and so we're kind of in the process now of trying to uh, put some new life into it, and we're getting some support from the courts and, and different things like that, and trying to resurrect that a little bit. The Northeast Kentucky Care Center is our free clinic. Uh, we're, as I said yesterday, we're in our second year. We're, we're operating very similar, similarly to what has been described with the People's Clinic. We're only open one evening a week, uh, and we're totally donations and volunteers. Uh, I think we, in the, in the uh, year and a half or so that we've been seeing patients, I think we've probably seen about 300 patients. We're targeting pretty much the same population, adults that uh, don't have insurance. Uh, I like your idea about uh, incorporating into that some of those patients that you know are falling through the cracks that's something that we hadn't discussed or talked about yet but i'm on the board and i will take that back to them i think that's a great idea uh, helping hands is kind of the food and clothing distribution center in greenup county and, and i do a little clinic down there once a month where i do health screenings and divas on their board and they do a lot of good work we partner with safe harbor which is our local women's domestic violence shelter and also with Sarah's Place in uh, Elliott County. I also head up the green team at Our Lady of Elfont. Uh, System-wide, Vaughn Support about two or three years ago decided that we needed to be better stewards of our environment, and so each local system had to create a green team, and we have goals and initiatives that we have to meet. And so these are some of our green team initiatives. Uh, one thing that we're very, very, uh, that we feel really good about is a partnership we have with a local church where we collect medical supplies that would otherwise be discarded. So we can count this as recycling. And these supplies are stored, they're picked up by the church and stored at the church until they get a truckload. And a truckload is about 8,000 pounds. And then once they get a truckload of supplies and equipment, they take that to a place in Middletown, Ohio called Caring Partners International which is kind of like a clearinghouse, and the equipment is uh, sorted and then distributed from uh, Middletown, Ohio, to various countries in need and all, you know, all over the world. We've had supplies this past year go to Haiti. We've had them go to Cuba, Thailand, um, trying to think of some of the other countries, but it, it's been you know, worldwide. We're also a, a, a drop-off point for cell phones for soldiers. This is where we collect cell phones that people don't want anymore and we ship them when we get a box full to uh, cell phones for soldiers. And these phones are uh, 
they are sent to a company called Recycle, where they're recycled. And for every phone that we collect and send, we get uh, an hour of talk time for our soldiers. They're, they're kind of converted into phone cards. And so uh, I just sent a box of 32 cell phones so that will compute or convert into hours and hours of talk time for uh, American soldiers in various parts of the world. And we try to do recycling of eyeglasses and plastic and aluminum and cardboard and scrap metal and all of these different things. We just recently figured out a way to recycle blue wrap from surgery. We're working with a local moving company and uh, our, our surgery staff is collecting the blue wrap and then uh, we send them it to move wrap and they're gonna use it to wrap things in when people are moving and that way we get to recycle the blue wrap. There is a homeless task force in Ashland and Greenwich counties, and Diva has worked real closely with them. We've done um, food drives. We've done uh, filled with hope bags for helping hands. I was down there just a few weeks, a uh, few well, actually last week for my little clinic that I do down there every month, and their shelves were looking really bare. I was concerned, so uh, we do these types of things. Uh, Diva has also worked with the brown bag program uh, for students in some of our schools in Greenwood County where brown bags are sent home uh, on Friday evening with food for the weekend for the students. Uh, again, our, our free clinic, that's just uh, Dr. Walls is no longer with us, he's relocated, but we have two doctors from Belfont now that are providing uh, physician services at the clinic. Uh, some of the next steps that I see in, in our program is uh, our basic parish nurse or faith community nurse education course that I told some of y'all about yesterday. We're going to be offering that June, July, and August. And you know, you have to come to all of them. It's not, you know, you have to come to all three sessions in order to complete the course. But uh, I'm very, very excited about that. And I just would like to see us broaden the scope of our community ministries. Anything that we can do, anything that we can add, you know, in terms of. Uh, screenings or education or classes, the farther we can go, you know, if we can expand beyond our, our boundaries where we are now, I'm, I'm all in favor of that. And then we're always looking for uh, new partners, whether it be a church or a service organization or um, a community group, we're willing, you know, to work with new partners and very, very, very open to that. Be happy to answer uh, any questions that you may have about the things that we're doing in the community at Our Lady of Alphonse. Uh, if you don't have any questions, if we have a few more minutes, Steve is going to touch briefly on our community benefit plan. We, uh, again, as a Bon Secours facility, uh, we have been charged with creating a community benefit plan that will cover a three-year uh, period. So we're in the process, Diva's writing that, we're in the process of getting that all submitted and so on. We will be, uh, what we had to do was uh, focus on a particular problem or area with our plan. And we've done some surveys and focus groups and so forth and I believe we have identified obesity as the, uh, the issue that we're gonna you know, build our plan around. Uh, followed closely by substance abuse, drug abuse, yes. And we are we don't have much time left, so um, I will go through it quickly. But the reason all nonprofit hospitals will be required to do this, it came out of the um, health care reform legislation. So if you work for a hospital and they're nonprofit, um, we're all required to do this. Um, and a survey of the community, which is um, something that, you know, the IRS wants is to find out what the community thinks they need. They don't want, um, as I said earlier, they don't want a bunch of um, uh, administrators sitting in an office thinking what the community needs and that they're already providing it. They want us to go out and find out what the community says they need and then look at what we're providing compared to that and make a plan for it. Um, so one of the things we did was we, of course, did some, um, gathered some data and um, looked at uh, issues, and you can write this link, or it's in your handout. You may want to go to SurveyMonkey to this link and take the survey, and um, if you, 
you may get some ideas if you need to do a survey in your own community um, feel free to go in and take the survey um, but um, the survey results um, as you can see um, our initial survey went out to um, to local nonprofits um, administrators and uh, just people in the community that we worked with that worked with clients um, and we also send it out to all of our employees, which we have over a thousand employees at Our Lady of Elfont. And they live all over the community. You know, they live in Elliott County. They live in Ironton. So we felt like, you know, we wanted to get their input. And I did two different links, so we would know if there was a big difference in what the employees said and what uh, the community said, because I asked them to do it as a community member, not as a healthcare employee. So I didn't know if they would really, you know, sometimes people just kind of read over things and don't really, um, so we, we did that. And it was pretty close on both. Um, a, a be, obesity was huge, drug addiction, um, substance abuse, um, diabetes, the things that we mostly know. It wasn't any real surprises, um, but, um, we will uh, use the framework that I use in my community work with getting uh, the community engaged in uh, what we have chosen to do is obesity and um, collaborate with other agencies, the health departments, um, the UK Extension, you know, they give diabetes classes, diabetes cookie classes. So people, you know, which if you're obese, you have a higher risk of getting diabetes. So, you know, a lot of these heart disease and um, other health concerns will roll right in together um, if we can if we can combat some obesity. So we will be using community dialogue and, and looking and making plans and strategies. Um, this is just the uh, demographics of what ages. Um, as you can see, 45 to 54 uh, was the highest rate of people. We had um, about almost 300 answer the question. So. We're, we will still reach out into the community and uh, get more feedback from residents as well. Uh, we also asked them um, what were the top three things they thought were the problems in their community um, to make them healthier, or things that would make their community healthier, and um, education of the residents um, regarding health care issues was a big one, and improve the nutrition and eating habits. Is, um, I think Maddie, if someone said earlier, what you eat really matters in all of your health uh, overall. So um, that was also big. And uh, physical activity and exercise, we all know that we need to do it. Uh, do we all uh, make time for it? No, but um, we also need to have facilities available close to our home. We don't need to have to drive two hours or an hour to get to a gym and then pay a lot of money because exercise doesn't really cost anything. It doesn't cost anything to go walk out your street but we feel like we need to buy a video or join a class or whatever. So I think getting a lot of those messages out will help. Um, and then the other question that we asked was which health care, health services needed strengthening? We wanted to know as a hospital, what are the services that you think need strengthening in your community? Um, and um, aging services came up, which Diana really um, is, uh, works with her community, with her um, staff, on a lot of aging services um, and you know we can't be the answer to everything and so hopefully some other uh, collaborations could come up with uh, some of these issues that are identified uh, substance abuse um, we hope that we can fix this problem someday but you know it's going to take a lot of money and a lot of work and a lot of education uh, to the young people and to older people. I mean, you see names of every age in the paper every day, so um, that's a huge issue. Um, we will continue uh, to reach out to the community, as I said. this um, Our results went to our board uh, retreat, um, our board director's retreat recently, and they chose obesity as uh, what they thought that we should focus on. So we are now in the process of getting the team together at the hospital from um, all different departments to see how we want to, to put our plan together and what we want to do to start. And we will, like I said, reach out to um, the Green County Health Department, which Maddie works with. She's worked with them on the MAP process, which is a um, assessment of the county 
Um, so we hope to be able to work with all of our partners that Diana mentioned and all the agencies to, you know, get uh, some programs out there to the residents that uh, need them the most. Is there any questions on this? I had to go pretty quickly, but um, I didn't want us to run over uh, too far. So uh, if there's any questions, I did look up the law and I've got it, I'll give you, um, it is for indoor or outdoor. Um, and the governor has signed it, so it kind of decreases the liability and it encourages schools to open up for um, after school programs and you know that kind of thing. So I did look that up for you. Thank you.